So these are two car doors, the front door and the back door, and a little bit of interesting light from the top which reflects on that metallic paint here. The elegant way to do industrial design is using NURBS curves, and this object is basically made of only four curves, very simple curves. This one, two right here, and one here. And uh, a key thing in industrial design is what is called the dimension gap. It's a gap between two uh, adjacent surfaces in one construction. And in car design it's especially elegant if you have um, lines which uh, are not broken really. Uh, in older cars you see uh, the light jumping from this uh, surface to the next really drastically so you see from the reflection that the two door doors for example or the fender and the door are not really elegantly connected like made out of one eggshell so to say uh, but in this case uh, it looks quite good and I show you how I did this so this is a new scene when we press and uh, just briefly press the spacebar we can Go to the four window uh, view here and we need a side or a front window for precise uh, place precisely pre uh, placing our curves i go to the front z uh, i activate the grid for now uh, now the whole um nerbs world sits here under curves surfaces and it's all in blue we'll use for this tutorial only two icons this one creates a curve and this one spans a loft, as it's called, basically a surface between the curves. And we'll do a very simple modeling of two doors uh, by just using four curves. It's highly elegant, and you will see the result is brilliant and um, very simple. So let's click on this icon here. And before actually placing the first, the starting point of the curve, let's. Um, press the key X which snaps the first point to the grid and do the same here and I just place a couple of points in equal distances just like this now I'm finished I press enter so I have the first curve now which basically sits here when I press the key W in order to move it for example you see that the pivot as it's called it sits in the center of the scene um, it would be nice to see the pivot in the center of the curve instead so we go to modify and center the pivot it doesn't really make a difference for this tutorial but it's a little bit irritating to select a curve and then have a, an, a, a, a transformation icon or scaling icon right here what we'll do now is we go back to this um, view here deactivate the grid and maybe use another background like this and now I duplicate that curve, Control D, and move it here. This is going to be our front door of the car. Now I duplicate it again and get very, very close because this is the gap dimension now. So this is very close now. And then I duplicate it again and this is going to be the back of our back door. Just like this. Maybe the back door is a little bit shorter than the front door. I don't know. I really don't care much about cars anyway, but uh, industrial design is always cool. Now I select curve 1 and 2 with a shift key and uh, span a surface. That's the surface I get. And I do the same with curves 3 and 4. Do this again so I have two surfaces now, uh, which are totally flat and gray. How about this background? Okay, that's better. Um, now let's place something underneath so we can render it later in a good way. Uh, for example, a polygon plane, just like this. I'll move it slightly further down and I de deactivate the grid so it's going to be fine. Okay, now I select the front door and create a new material for it. Arnold standard surface and we just ignore the default white uh, surface shader and use one of the presets 
and now I think uh, we're moving out of the screen capture view yes uh, but you might see it here we have a car paint metallic and we replace the current white Arnold shader with a car paint metallic Arnold shader uh, which is by default blue which is a very nice blue I think so the back door needs the same shader so I go to assign existing material that's called the AI standard surface shader 1 now uh, we don't have a light so we won't see anything so let's introduce uh, two lights one is the sky dome light actually or we can use a physical sky and um, the physical sky wraps around the whole scene but we don't currently see it because uh, it has that black uh, uh, horizon so to say we'll change this in a second but we need uh, much more uh, intensity here so this is much better um, I select the sky dome it's uh, selected right here and now I can rotate it so I look into the top of that dome and don't see the black but see some blue sky now I need a second light and uh, I create an area light and the area light currently sits here which is not very convenient um, we need to oops where is it here we need to place it so it looks at the surface in a cool way like this like this and maybe from above and we scale it up the dimensions of that uh, light are uh, very important we select the four curves now all the four curves and um, when we press the key F8 function key 8 we switch to component selection could have done the same thing with the right mouse click and uh, select the CVs now um, let's select the two rows at the very top here and you see that uh, gradient here which means I have a soft selection on when I press the key B it uh, goes away but I need it in this context so um, with uh, the soft selection on I just go to the W key and move the door both doors a little bit forward now I press B again meaning I'll uh, deactivate the soft selection and I only move this one like this and maybe the front one a little bit more here and the back one a little bit more here now uh, the surface gets a little bit more interesting let's select the ones down here and move them further down you see already interesting little things happening here um, actually we can move this a little bit further down and then we select the next row here and move it up so we get this little dent here which makes the car surface very interesting now um, let's select those here actually the ones down here press B which is a soft selection again and do this because this is where the, the front fender will start etc and uh, it's much more dramatic with it with a back um, wheel here so let's do this so the back wheel will be typically here so the back door is usually shorter and uh, people have to jump in across or over sort of the the, the dent of the back wheel whereas uh, it's much more comfortable to get into the car with the front um, uh, door of course okay um, the um, dimension gap here is tiny because we did not do anything bad to uh, the curves here we didn't uh, we, we always selected them and moved them together but I could have I could select uh, just one uh, of the CVs and move them here that's the bad dimension gap I was talking about and um, finally I show you a rendering with uh, the lights we have plus a few additional lights the current light setting is like this and now we already see that the flow of the reflection is quite good and when you see a car when you um, in the traffic uh, next time 
and you see the uh, this line not harmoniously continuing from one door to another making a jump here um, then you know the dimension gap is not uh, perfectly modeled. I once did an interview with a chief designer of uh, Porsche cars and he said uh, we don't have that big manufacturing unit just like Audi for example or BMW that's why our gaps are bigger than with other cars. Well I don't know if that's still the case but um, yeah. I'll show you a rendering with a setup from uh, 3D Studios and I give you the link how to find that.